Hello my friends, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop and welcome to part three of the Japanese Shamisen Sanshin build project. Right, let me just check I've got the microphone on. <laughs> because that brings me to an apology for the lack of audio at the end of part two. Basically, I'm an idiot and I forgot to turn the microphone back on. Um, but you may remember that I was uh, shaping the body uh, of, of this one, um, which is going to be the Sanjian, the smaller of the two instruments. And uh, I, um, I finished it off camera. It's, it's not finalised. I mean, it still needs some, you know, fine hand sanding, but the, the shape is all there. Um, and, you know, I've got the other one as well. So I've got the two of them shaped, as I said, no, not final sanded yet, there's no point doing that at this stage. So um, at the end of part two, uh, when I would switched the microphone off, I was, um, you know, just talking about finishing this off camera. Um, and then the next stage uh, would have been to start getting on with the neck. Now, hopefully I'll still get to that in this video, but... What I want to um, talk about first of all is is the the bodies. So as I said, I've got got the two bodies now, Shamisen and Sanchin. The Sanchin is the smaller of the two instruments, and you know the basic shape is there. So uh, with the Shamisen one, um, if I just kind of tap all over the top kind of get a pretty consistent sound. It's nice and solid. All seems good. Now this this uh, Sanchin one that I, would, I was uh, doing in part two, um, it's not the same. So most of it's solid, kind of this side and the top, but down in this corner, the uh, the, the top part has. You might be able to see there's there's a lip going around here, and what's happened is it's it's be come unglued um, it may well have been you know due to the vibration of doing all the sanding and everything on it and the cutting or it might have already been loose I don't think it was because I would have noticed um, so right so that so it's come unglued basically down in this corner now <coughs> excuse me that is quite easy to fix um, I can get some watered down wood glue and put uh, in here uh, and in the, the back side and I can kind of, you know, press it in and out to wick the glue inside the joint, get all the glue inside that and it would do the job absolutely perfectly. It would, you know, completely seal it up, make it all solid and it would be absolutely fine. It's really easy to do that actually, a lot easier than you might think. You think, oh, you need to, you know, squeeze the glue in there or get a paintbrush in there or something. But if you if you water the glue down a bit, not too much, and, and kind of press on that so that it moves, the glue will actually wick down inside the joint. And, you know, it will be a good, solid glue joint. It will be perfectly stable, perfectly strong. Um, the only time you would have a problem with that, and I'm, I probably would do with this, is that the old glue that's in there, uh, I've no idea what kind of glue it is and it might not bond to it very well. So there is a chance that it may not, you know, completely uh, solid itself up, but it probably would. I, I'd say 90% it, it probably would. But um, this kind of lends itself to uh, something else that I was planning for this project anyway. As I, as I said at the beginning, you know, I'm going to be making at least two, possibly, probably three. Um, I was going to think about making a fourth one, but I'm not going to have enough materials, uh, certainly for the neck at least. So I'm going to be doing three, probably. And, um, you know, this, this Shamison one has a solid wooden top, about 13mm thick. Um, the downside of that is sometimes it can, you know, deaden the sound a little bit, but it shouldn't be a problem with these. I mean, the Sanchin that I had before was built in more or less ex exactly the same way and dimensions, nice thick wood, top and sides, and it sounded just fine. 
But as I said, this, this little issue here with the, the top coming unstuck has lent itself to um, one of the other ways I was going to do a top for these instruments. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. Um, so rather than trying to dig this, this piece out and possibly damage it, I'm basically going to go to uh, where the top of it finishes there and cut all the way around. So basically cut the whole top off. Um, I mean, I could take that out. It probably wouldn't be that difficult. But the problem is with these uh, corner inserts I've got. Let me just put that light on. These, uh, you know, the corner inserts I've got, they, they go as far as the, the top inside. So if I took the top out, you'd have like a, a half inch gap. So rather than doing that, I'm literally going to um, cut the whole of the top off. Just cut it off. And go with my other plan of a top for this instrument. I ain't going to tell you what that is at this stage. <laughs> More on that later in the project. So I'm going to put this one aside for now and uh, carry on with the chamisen build. Um, because this, you know, this as it is, is, is ready to go. So, uh, the next stage is to turn my attention to the neck. Now, um, I have already started one of the necks, and that actually is for the chamisen. But, uh, so which is the one that I need right now. But, um, I want to show you how I got to the stage where it is now. I'm going to give you a very brief look at that neck, that's your lot. <laughs> so that is the one for uh, this bigger chamisen. But I'm going to make the neck for the, for the other one, the Sanchin. <coughs> Basically just so that I can show you the process of how I got to the stage of what that other neck is right now. So, I've got uh, this uh, blank for the other neck. Um, I've done a bit of marking off camera. Um, so, where you see those squiggly lines, that's, that's the scrap, basically. That's what's going to be cut away. And I've made two cuts here and here already. Um, but what I need to do now is to make the basic shape of the neck. So, this is going to be done on my new tool, the table saw. But just before I do that, I just want to say, um, you know, as, as I said at the beginning of this project, um, these are <coughs> traditional Japanese instruments uh, with a history that goes back many, many years, hundreds, possibly even thousands of years, I don't know. They're very, very old instruments and traditional Japanese instruments. And I am going to try and get them, you know, as close to the original design as possible. They're not going to be exactly the same, not even close really, but I'm going to try and make them as close as possible to the original design. So, if I'm making traditional Japanese musical instruments, it really makes sense to use traditional Japanese tools. So, to that end, I will be using my... Um, Shogun uh, Japanese ripsaw. Actually, it's got it's got a double-sided blade. One one side is is called a um, cross cut, so for cutting across the grain, and this side is called a, a rip cut for cutting down the grain. So my uh, Shogun Japanese saw. Um, unfortunately, I did notice. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but some of the the teeth around here are are broken. Um, damaged and I, th I think I did this myself I think I was cutting through a piece of wood the last time I used it and hit a nail so the blade is a little bit damaged um, it's still usable it's only a few of the teeth from sort of here to here um, it's still usable so I will still be using it however I have ordered a new blade for this saw at a, co at a cost of the equivalent, equivalent of about 20 pounds just for just for the blade and you can see uh, the blade kind of screws into the handle so I've, I've got a new blade on order but for the time being it is still usable <laughs> uh, 
so that's one tool that I will be using during this build. Um, I'm not going to be using that a lot, but I will for some some parts of it. So the Shogun uh, Japanese rip saw and cross cutting saw, and also my Shinto saw rasp. I'm going to be using this a lot. Um, this is a fantastic tool. So we've got uh, it basically looks like sort of cross hacksaw blades and we've got a very coarse side and I'm not going to call it a fine side but a less coarse side. So this is a, um, a Shinto saw rasp and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It kind of saws and rasps at the same time. Amazing tool this is. I've used it a few times before and it's really good. So I'm going to be using this a lot as well on these builds. Okay, so waffling over, um, I'm going to uh, now make the cuts to uh, get the basic shape of this neck. Uh, okay, I've just discovered I've got a problem. <laughs> My camera is plugged in. The minute I unplug it, it's going to shut down. So. That's going to have to be for part four. Sorry to keep, keep you in suspense like this, but <coughs> I know from previous experience, the minute I unplug this camera, it's just going to shut down. But, you know, it, it's good in a way because I, I want to keep... There's going to be quite a few episodes to this project, and I want to keep the videos fairly short for the most part. You know, so maximum 20 minutes. We're currently up to, like, 12 minutes. Um, but, but that's fine. I, I would rather do it that way. Um, you know, quality over quantity. So, you know, just to recap, I'm uh, continuing on with the chamisen and the sanchin I'm putting aside for the time being because I'm going to do a different top for that. And, you know, I've basically got the, the neck uh, roughed out for this, but I'm going to be, you know, doing the neck for the other one. Um, just, as I said, to show you the process of how I got to, you know, where the other one is right now. Other one, this one, that one, the, you know, it's a bit confusing, but I, I think you understand what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm going to end this one here and then I'm going to get set up straight away and start recording part four of cutting the neck out. And uh, it's, it's, um, there's a few processes to, to, to cutting the neck. I mean, first of all, to, you know, to cut, to cut this piece out here, which, you know, will be the back or the bottom end and then cut all of this off here, which is going to be the, the, the actual neck itself. Um, and then I have to, you know, cut the tapered shaft to go through the body. Uh, then I have to, you know, do the headstock, yada, yada, yada. There's lot, lots of processes to this. So, as I said, I will end this video here to start a new one, part four, for this neck. So, uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please uh, leave a like and a comment. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell I'm uploading videos you know two or three a week at the moment on average and um, yeah this is as I said this is going to be a fairly long project but I want to try and keep the videos you know fairly short 20 minutes maximum um, because they, they can get a bit tedious to make and to watch so uh, in the meantime, please look after yourselves, look after each other, and we will see you soon. Peace out.